and welcome to the Vention Assembly series. My name is Jeremy, and I'm in charge of education here at Vention. In this video, we'll be taking a look at our family of enclosed actuators. This includes their basic setup, assembly process, as well as compatible hardware. First, we'll be taking a look at our enclosed timing belts, followed by our enclosed lead screw and ball screw, and finally, we'll look at some additional hardware meant for mounting parallel enclosed actuators. As a reminder, it's always recommended to work in a clean and open environment to make the assembly process go as smoothly as possible. We're going to start off by looking at our enclosed timing belts. The enclosed timing belt comes in three different configurations, the standard duty, heavy duty, and dual gantry. Right here, we have the standard and heavy duty enclosed timing belt. However, all three versions of the actuator share the same setup process and compatible hardware. One of the unique features of this line of actuator is that they each have a cover strip to prevent dust or debris from entering inside during operation. This allows these actuators to be used in harsher or dustier environments. The actuator itself comes completely pre-assembled with a belt pre-tension, so all that's required is to install the powertrain components and sensors. Now the motor can be attached to the housing at either end of the actuator, on either the right or the left side, depending on your configuration. All that's required is to remove the cover plate at the desired location. Sensor ports can also be found at either end of the actuator, again on the left or right side, as well as the grease port for standard maintenance. From here, I'll go over the basic steps to show the greasing application process for the enclosed timing belts. The first step is to remove the grease port cover at the end of the actuator. From there, slide the gantry to the end of its available travel and attach the 90 degree grease fitting to your grease gun. Insert it into the grease port, make sure the fitting is facing the direction of the gantry plate. Once inserted, apply approximately seven milliliters of grease. With this done, you can then reinsert the grease port, slide the gantry to the opposite end and repeat the previous steps. It should be noted that the internal components and the cover strip come pre-lubricated and should be maintained as per our maintenance guide. Now, we'll take a look at the compatible hardware. For the powertrain components, the enclosed timing belts can be driven by either a medium or large NEMA 34 stepper servo motors. Moving on, if more torque is required, both the standard and the right angle 5 to 1 reduction gearboxes can be used between the motors and the actuator itself. The power off brake that you have over here is also compatible and should be mounted if you have a vertically mounted actuator or if required for your assembly. Finally, the lockable handwheel is also an option if you'd like to drive it manually. For over travel sensors, the enclosed timing belts are designed to function with the flush inductive proximity sensors and can be mounted directly into the actuator at the sensor port at either end. To attach the actuator to your assembly, you have a single T-slot channel that runs the full length of the actuator, as well as two that run along the entire base. Now, move on to our enclosed lead screw and enclosed ball screw actuators. Over here, we have our enclosed ball screw actuator. It can be noted that the enclosed ball screw and the enclosed lead screw share most internal and external components, with the exception of the screw shaft and the nut housing itself. As mentioned earlier, the cover strip here prevents particulate from entering into the actuator, enabling it to be used in harsher environments. Like the enclosed timing belts, both the ball screw and the lead screw actuators come completely pre-assembled. The only thing to do upon receiving it is to install the powertrain components and the sensors. There is one additional step required to install the motor to the screw actuators, which would be to tighten the set screws in the coupling to ensure proper engagement with the motor shaft. Again, similar to the enclosed timing belts, sensor ports can be found on each corner of the actuator to allow for full configurability when designing. However, a major difference is that the grease ports used for standard maintenance are found here on either side of the gantry plate itself. The method of applying grease to the actuators is actually a much simpler process. All you have to do is attach a standard grease gun to either of the two Zerk fittings, and apply approximately 18 milliliters of grease. It is important to note that both ports feed the same channel, so grease only needs to be applied to one of the two ports. Moving on, both the cover strip and the internal components do come pre-lubricated and should be maintained as per our maintenance guide. Now, we'll take a look at the compatible hardware. For 
For the powertrain components, the enclosed ball screw can use the small, medium, or large NEMA 34 stepper servo motors, whereas the enclosed lead screw should only be driven by the medium or large motors. For over-travel sensors, the enclosed actuators are designed to function with the flush inductive proximity sensors, which can be mounted directly into the sensor ports at either end. Finally, the power-off brake and the lockable handwheel are compatible with both actuators. To attach the lead screw and the ball screw to your assembly, you have a single T-slot channel on either side, as well as three that run the full length of the actuator. To close off, we'll be taking a look at what hardware is needed when you have two parallel enclosed actuators. Over here, we have the mounting plates designed specifically for attaching two mechanically joined enclosed actuators to a structure without the need for high precision tools. These mounting plates are used in pairs, with the leader securing one of the parallel actuators and a follower securing the other. They each have a rotational degrees of freedom around the X, Y, and Z axis, as well as additional translational degree for the follower. With this, they prevent the development of internal stresses on the bearings, even if the axes are installed with a few millimeters of misalignment. It should be noted that once the assembly is complete, the system does become fully constrained. That covers the basics of Vention's enclosed actuators. Thank you for watching this assembly video, and please do check out the other ones in the series.